Now, point and shoot cameras, I honestly thought they were kind of dying out. There just hasn't been that much exciting going on in the point and shoot world. And also, phones are getting so freaking good. But this is the Sony ZV-1. And if this is as good as I think it is, I'm never giving this back to Sony. They let me borrow it so I can test it out. But you know what? I'll change my name. I'll get a passport. You'll never see me again, mother. Should I keep going? Yeah. Now you're gone, they're never gonna see you again. <laughs> that joke better have been worth it. I almost tripped running down that hill. All right, so why am I so excited about this camera? First, whoa. Yes, thank you. We like flip out screens so we can mount an external microphone up top and the microphone doesn't cover this screen. And yes, if we have a microphone, we need a mic input. So that is also in this camera. Yes, it does do 4K and 24 and 30 frames per second. It has a one inch sensor. It has a lens that opens up to an F 1.8. I mean, come on, this is what I've been waiting for. Did I also mention high frame rates? 240, 480, 960 frames per second. I mean, these are all specs as of right now. We have to run it through its tests. I'm excited, Sam. Are you excited? Am I? You can't see, but I'm smiling. Now enjoy the nice background while you can because we are getting the hell out of here. There's so many bugs. Let's go, Sam. Why the heck did we think this would be a good idea to come out here, huh? We keep pretending we're healthy and we're not. One of the things Sony was telling me about is the new color science in this camera. How's that look? That's something that they've been working on. So first impressions, the footage is looking pretty good. I am holding it out at arm's length right now. Now it's not as wide as my primary vlog camera right here, which is a full frame 15 millimeter. And you can see that there's a whole lot more room in the vlog camera. I believe this is about a 24 millimeter equivalent. So it's not as wide as I would love it to be, but it's still totally acceptable. Now let's talk about the other thing that I immediately noticed. Does my skin look extra nice and smooth right now? Sam, are you wearing makeup? I'm kind of insecure about my, my face. By default, it comes with this kind of digital makeup filter attached, it's like beauty mode. I personally don't really like it. It's really distracting. It's called the soft skin effect and you could have it low, medium, or high. And I'm just gonna completely just turn it off. Now the RX100 Mark VII had a crazy zoom lens. You could start really wide and go all the way to a really tight close up, which which was awesome. Now this does not have that. This is all the way wide and as we zoom in, this is all the way tight. So the zoom isn't anything significant here, but I would honestly prefer this lens still because it opens up to an f1.8. So we're losing the ability to get a really big zoom range, but at the same time, we have a nice fast lens, which is gonna help us out when we get into low light. And there's definitely some nice touches to this thing. For example, there's that little red light right next to the lens to let you know, hey, we're recording. And also when it's turned off, all you gotta do is open the screen and it auto automatically turns on. So there's some simple little things going on here that I'm really digging. All right, so one thing I've noticed is that the autofocus on this camera is spot on. And there's a feature in this camera that I didn't even know I wanted, but now that I see what it can do, I want every single camera to have it. So if I'm talking to the camera and I'm like, hey, look at this random thing I'm holding. You know, the autofocus is set to my face. So if I try to show you something, it's gonna be out of focus, right? But I'm gonna turn on this mode called product showcasing. Now check this out. It's still focused on me, but as soon as I go to show you something, look at my keys, whoa, focus. And I don't think this is a feature that everybody necessarily wants, but for people like me that want it, it is awesome. And look at how good the autofocus is. It's so quick, even if I bring it way up to here, Wow, and it's a simple feature, but I love this. Quick, look at this SD card. Oh, you know I'm just here enjoying my coffee, not sponsored by Starbucks. And I'm always showing stuff, you know? So being able to be like, hey, look at this drone. It's awesome that I can just hold it and it'll focus on it. I usually have my cameras on face detect, so if I wanna show something, I kinda have to use the product to block my face before it'll focus on it. But here, I don't have to worry about it at all. It just knows when I put something in front of me, and that is awesome. And the autofocus is a beast too. Look at this, boom, sharp, and sharp, 
and sharp. Look, wow, I'm really, really impressed. Sony has been making huge leaps in autofocus. Bam, focus! And check out the macro on this too. This is a little SD card and it's still focused. It's still focused. That's that's not bad. Time for an extreme close-up. It's simple and it's useful. Love it. One of the things that has always amazed me with these Sony point-and-shoot cameras is the high frame rate capabilities. You can get 120 frames per second continuously in HD. So that is always awesome to have, but you also can hop up to 240 frames per second, 480 frames per second, and 960 frames per second. A 960 quality looks terrible, but again, 960 frames per second. We're talking about slowing things way down to where you can see every single little detail. So that is definitely super fun to have. Anything past 120 is going to be a burst mode, so you can only buffer for a couple seconds. First accessory I would get is this microphone. Second accessory I would get is this little guy right here. Just having this little extra grip here definitely helps stabilize your shot because the stabilization inside the camera, I mean, it's nice. It's definitely a whole lot better than not having it. But at the same time, it's not like an action camera where you could just go and it'd be all right. Let me look at this. It's kind of a perfect little setup here. I mean, we got our microphone up here, our camera, our flip screen, and a controller slash grip. So I could just hit that record button and we're rolling and I could even zoom. Oh. Oh, too close! And the design of this grip's actually pretty good. It's just a button to rotate it to the side or in front. And there's a button on the side to adjust your angle. And yes, it also opens up to be a little teeny tripod. Hey, Sam. Would you get this set up? Oh yeah, I take it to Coachella every year and every other music festival. Yeah, for film festivals and stuff like that where you're not allowed to bring in mirrorless cameras and all that. There's... Music festivals. What did I say? Film festivals. Ah, oh, film festivals. Ugh. But I think at a lot of places, security guards are trained to look for cameras where the lenses come off. And then if they see that it retracts, they're like, oh, okay, that's totally fine. I think this is perfect for people that are just starting out and for people that are camera shy because there's not a lot of attention going towards you. Definitely like a bigger vlog camera. Everyone's like, whoa, what's that dude doing? And then whenever Sam's following me around with one of these bigger cameras, then everybody's like, Whoa. Like I don't like the attention that it draws, you know? So this is kind of a good middle ground option. And it's not necessarily just for beginners. Like I would totally use this. I mean, I would probably use a bigger camera when I can, but when it comes to stuff that can fit into your pocket, this might be one of the highest end cameras that you could possibly pack in there that I would actually use. The camera does have image stabilization. You could choose between having it off and then there's standard and then there's active. When you have it off, it better be on a tripod or a gimbal because it's going to shake a lot. And then there's standard, which is definitely going to improve a whole lot. You're gonna see a night and day difference in how jittery your footage is, but I find that standard works best if you're holding it pretty stable and you're not moving around too much. Once you start moving around and doing some walking, that's when you probably wanna bump it up to active. The active does crop into your frame a little bit, but if you're moving around a whole lot, then you'll definitely notice the difference. I have shaky hands, so I'm gonna leave it on active. Or you could just stop drinking coffee. You can leave. Keep in mind that even on active, it's not like GoPro style stabilization where you can run around with it and it's gonna come out looking super smooth. The only way to get gimbal-like shots on this camera is to actually put it on a gimbal. Like if you're shooting a lot of handheld stuff, then definitely be mindful of holding it stable. And as long as you're doing that, the footage should come out pretty decent. Another thing that's awesome is built-in ND filters in the camera. That's another reason why I would prefer this camera over the more expensive RX100 Mark VII. Lenses on both of the cameras close down to an f11. So that means if it's really bright Then you might not be able to get the settings you want. So in really bright places ND filters are a must Now how about dark places? We have Sony's one in sensor in here same one out of the RX 100 mark 7 Which was pretty awesome in low light, but now we have an f 1.8 Aperture when we're zoomed all the way out and it opens up to an f 2.8 when you zoom it in So when you combine that sensor and lens 
LED low light, incredible. Put it next to a phone, I mean, it completely blows it out of the water. There is no comparison. This can get those shots. So loving the lens and sensor combination. And I don't know about you guys, but so far I'm really enjoying the images coming out of this camera. All the shots so far have just been on no picture profile. So if you pull it out of the box, that's the type of image you could expect to get out of it. I think Sony in general has just been making some pretty big improvements across the board, right? Like the picture profile out of their new FX9. I mean, it's solid. If you still want to get kind of crazy with it, there are still those picture profiles that you typically see in a Sony camera, which is nice because if you're shooting on something like this, you can kind of match the colors. We typically shoot S-Log3 on this camera and then grade it. Even though we can shoot S-Log3 on this camera too, the codec isn't going to be as strong. So I wouldn't really recommend it, but there are definitely some nice middle ground picture profiles in there like HLG2. At 4K24 and 4K30, we are getting about 100 megabits per second. And by looking at a couple of these 4K shots, you can definitely see that there's quite a bit of detail in there. Not enough information in the file to heavily grade, but it's a good image. One thing I did notice while filming was that the overheating temperature gauge did pop up a couple times and it wasn't that hot. So we'll have to see if this is gonna be a consistent issue. I'm gonna be vlogging all weekend with it. So we'll circle back on that. And another thing is I wanna test out the different microphone options. This is the Rode Video Micro up here, but Sony does make a microphone that just fits into the hot shoe and you don't have to actually go in and plug it in. That would be cool because that gives us a nice microphone and just streamlines the whole thing. Another thing I thought was interesting is look at this little guy. So the microphone is right up here, but I can slide this and it covers up the microphone for when there's wind. That's pretty cool, huh? And definitely useful if you're filming out in windy places. Do you think we should name this guy? Mr. Floppy Bottom. I think he's more of a, a Larry. What? I do. You don't give pets real names, you give them <laughs> cute names. You named a squirrel Kevin. How are you gonna tell me not to name a thing? Now for my vlog channel, I think I'm gonna use this camera exclusively for the next couple days. So let's start beating her up. <laughs> So now I'm just using the internal microphone that's built into the camera and I have that little fuzzy attachment on there. So hopefully that kills some of the wind. You can probably hear the wind, but hopefully it's bearable. And if that's the case, that means the little fuzzy thing up top is doing its job. If I pull it off, does it sound different? Does it sound less good? Are you hearing the wind more? All right, come on, this is some skill, right? We're riding, getting our coffee vlogging all at the same time. Honestly, I've been using this as my primary vlog camera for the last couple days and it's not bad. The quality is there. It's very convenient. You know, I think the main reason why I'm not switching to this as my full time vlog camera is the fact that I can't really get much wider than this. Like right now I'm kind of in a medium close up. It'd be nice to get into a full on medium shot like I can with my full frame. But if they made a version just like this, but had an ultra wide angle lens, oh man, I might be tempted. I don't know. But as a secondary compact camera, this thing is awesome. I'm 100% gonna be using it. Now when I'm vlogging, I don't really like to think about camera settings too much. So I am in shutter priority mode so I can set my shutter speed. I have it to 1 50th of a second right now. If I go out into the sun, everything else should adjust and keep me exposed. If there's gonna be a whole lot of moving around, then I might actually bump it up to a little bit higher, maybe like 1 80th of a second for my shutter speed. But yeah, it seems to adjust pretty well. One downside about shooting in 4K though, is that the monitor doesn't get as bright as it does if you were shooting in full HD. So I can still see the monitor, I can see what I'm recording and whatnot, but if I switch it into HD, I can make it into sunny brightness mode, which makes it so I can clearly see the screen. Right now I can still see it, but it's just not as clear as I wish it was. Now another thing that's unique is this button right here. That is a defocus background button. It's basically a super quick way of blurring out your background and it works best when you're shooting on auto. And not really a feature I would use that much because I'm usually shooting in either manual or shutter priority. But there's definitely a lot of people that's gonna appreciate that button right there. They just wanna quickly go, oh, I want it to look professional. 
blurry background, done. And it's still powerful, you know, if you treat it like a proper camera and you know, put out a tripod or gimbals, you're gonna get some pretty awesome stuff with something as simple as this. Now, one issue I did initially have was overheating. I was seeing all kinds of overheating icons pop up and the camera cuts after five minutes automatically when you're recording in 4K. But turns out you could actually disable that five minute record time limit by switching the auto power off temperature setting. So basically that's set to standard by default, but if you switch it to high, it essentially prioritizes your record time over maintaining the temperature on the camera. And after I switched that threshold to high, I was able to record straight for an hour and 10 minutes before the battery died. And I didn't see any sort of overheating icons or anything like that. And that was kind of at a warm room temperature around 77, 78 degrees. Threw it in the incubator, put it to about 103 degrees Fahrenheit, which is about 40 degrees Celsius. And both times it made it to right around 20-ish minutes in 4K. Obviously we'd prefer for it to never overheat, but from tests I've done in the past, there's not that many cameras that can handle that hot temperature for an extended period of time. So really 20 minutes is actually not that bad. Overall, I would say when it comes to cameras that can actually fit in your pocket, this might be my favorite. If you go out with even like a small mirrorless camera, you have a lot of attention dedicated to that camera. You're either holding it, you have to keep it in a bag or a shoulder strap or something like that. But here you just whoop done. Oh, you know what? I do have a camera. Yeah. Now I asked some of my buddies about what they want in a point and shoot camera. They don't know about this yet, but let's just see what they say. Connor said he wants the latest Sony point and shoot except for with an ND filter and an F1.8 aperture. It's exactly what this is. Plus a flip screen and a whole bunch of extra other features. Frank says internal memory, like my phones, app support, Instagram and stuff. Yeah. I mean like the internal memory is kind of an interesting one, huh? Like our drone has a little bit of internal memory. So if you forget your SD card, you can still record. That'd be handy. Steven Short said, good low light performance and solid internal mic quality plus stabilization. I'm pretty sure they're gonna sell a lot of these cameras because I honestly think this delivers a lot of what a lot of people have been asking for. Jonathan, I'm pretty sure he has one of the RX 100s. He says it lacks a bit of depth of field and low light because they switched from F 1.8 to 2.8 for that 24 to 200 millimeter. I personally prefer the F 1.8. Yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking too. He also said, I think it'd be really cool if it had an ultra wide because there aren't really any ultra wide pocket cams besides the GoPros and Insta 360. Yeah, that is true. I agree with that. If there was like a little slip on thing that you can attach at the end of it, which would just give you a little bit of extra width, even if it sacrifices the image quality a little bit, if it just gives you that extra field of view, that, that would be cool. I can't wait to use that thing to get like really nice cinematic shots of my friends being drunk. This would be a perfect nightlife cam. Yeah, for sure. Cause I don't really bring any of my mirrorless cameras to a bar or anything like that. But this you could actually put in your pocket. And then real quickly just be like, tch, 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 and then just put it away before the bouncer tells you anything. Adam and Ralph said it would be cool if they were water resistant. That is one thing that I have noticed about point and shoot cameras is they can be a little bit sensitive to drops or impacts. I haven't dropped us to this one yet. So I can not say how durable it is, but that would be nice if it had some sort of water resistant so you could go and do certain water activities without having to worry about a little splash. Clement says a 500x zoom and native macro capability. <laughs> yeah, I would love all these things too. Phones are cool. They take a different approach by adding a couple different sensors and lenses opposed to having one lens that kind of does it all. And I love the ultra wide angle lens on our phones, but phones just still have that phone look. But here I swear, if you were to look at some of this footage and I say, oh, we shot that with a mirrorless camera, you might look at it and be like, yeah, that seems about right. But overall killer camera. I mean, I didn't think I'd be this excited about a point and shoot again, but this is the one. This is the one guys. Now I'm just trying to figure out a good way to close this video. Are you going to close up, Sam? Mm-hmm. That's it for today's video, everybody. I'm out of things to talk about. So, so long to the loot. Goodbye. You guys are the best. Don't forget to subscribe and stuff.